Couple of days on from Scotland, England, Calcutta Cup, and I feel like there's loads to talk about. So I wanted to do another video. I did my one immediately after the game, sort of thoughts immediately on the full-time whistle, but having had a few days to digest it, where are you of this Scotland team and where are you of this England team? In particular, with Steve Borthwick's side, I think there's quite a lot of different opinions flying around. So I wanted to talk about that into the, in the video. Welcome back to the channel. Have your say in the comments section. Make sure you like the video, subscribe to the channel, all that sort of stuff. But I suppose for England fans, really, the question is, where are you now with this England team? So the first two rounds of this Six Nations didn't play well, but they did win, admittedly against the probably who we suspect are the two weakest sides in the Six Nations, but they had two victories. So then they were coming into it against Scotland and you're looking at their remaining fixtures and fans wanted... A result, understandably, but I think they saw it as a real test of this England side. Are they making genuine progress? Can they go up against one of their rivals who have beaten them in the Six Nations over the last three years and actually get a result on them away from home? And because England have lost, I think it's led to a lot of soul searching, which I've no doubt in the comments section, there'll be plenty of uh, other fans, Scotland fans and, and fans of other nations in, enjoying <laughs> the continued turmoil and continued travails of this England team. But it is interesting, and I've been thinking about it, and it's, I feel like it would be foolish to think that it is an easy fix to this side. They've had issues for years. We've seen the issues off the field in the game in England. It was never going to be straightforward, I think, in this Six Nations, that they would immediately start winning at a really comprehensive rate again as we've seen them do previously I don't think anyone really expected them to be on for a grand slam or even winning the championship but it was about seeing a mark of progress so it was never going to be easy but at the same time I think it's fair for fans to expect more and expect more than they're currently seeing from this England side and I know Steve Borthwick spoke about it after the game the lack of experience for a number of their combinations. We've seen a number of debutants already this Six Nations for England. So they, in a sense, are at the beginning of a process. And if we look back at those first two games, and actually even in some of the press coverage that I've seen and read, I think there's still an element of goodwill to this England team. Because even in that game against Scotland, you could see what their defence was trying to do. And you could see when the blitz defence works how effective it can be, the errors it forced from Scotland, particularly in the first quarter of the game. And you can say the same for the attack. When they get it right, it can score tries and it can be devastating. But at the moment, we're not seeing it regularly enough. It is in incredibly brief periods here and there. So do you throw away all of that goodwill because of one performance and one result? Everything we said after the Italy game, everything we said after the Wales game, do you throw all that away? Do you cast it all aside just because of one performance and result against Scotland? And I have seen some people suggesting that. I've seen some people questioning whether Borthwick is the right man to take them forward. Some of you might agree with that. I've seen people questioning that even some of the older heads in the team, the likes of Danny Kerr and George Ford, need to be moved on, even though this is a Six Nations where we've already seen a number of young players come into the team. So I don't particularly agree with that because I think you see with Wales at the moment, when you don't have any experience in there whatsoever, quite what your team looks like. So I don't know, is my honest answer. I think my gut instinct is stick with them, give it time, but in the same breath accepting, we need to start seeing more. It's one thing being able to see what this England team are trying to do. It's another thing, them actually going out and executing it and being more efficient. And they've got two Massive test to do that now coming up in this Six Nations. Ireland at home, which I don't think England will win, but I think the fact that they are at home means that they might be able to show us something. Can they show an expanded attack? Which is similar things to what I said in all honesty heading into the Scotland game. So maybe I'm just repeating myself. Maybe I'm giving them too much leeway. And yes, things need to be better, but I would stick with them. I would hope that they continue to improve, but we need to see those improvements, I think, in these games coming up. And I think Borthwick is the right man. I think you have to give him time to take it forward. That being said, I do have concerns over the coaching at the moment. I don't know whether it's to do with Borthwick. I don't know whether it's to do with the whole coaching team, probably the latter. But one of the biggest frustrations for me in that Scotland game was 
10 minutes to go, under 10 minutes to go, England chasing the game, needing multiple scores, and they're continuing to box kick it. Go a couple of phase and box kick it, and then the kick's not that good, the chase isn't that good, they don't win the ball back. At times, they are a team that look overcoached. But for me, my position is let's wait and see, let's hope they keep getting better, which I would imagine many people might disagree with. That's just my feeling at this moment in time. And it's a difficult one, isn't it? Because on the one hand, you could say, we've had three games this year, that's an incredibly small sample size to be able to fully judge this England team by. The very good counter argument to that would be like, well, it's three games out of five in a Six Nations. You don't have time. You have to perform here and now. And maybe they're still not quite able to do that. But as I say, overall, given the overall picture, I still would give them time to, to try and build on what they have been doing, I suppose. Um, I'll probably leave it there for England. There's maybe more I can touch on, but those are my general thoughts on this England team. Wanted to mention one thing with Scotland, really, after the match, because it was another match where coming into it, same with the France game, and it was the same with the England game, where you looked at the two teams and a lot of people spoke about Scotland being able to match up to the power games of France and the power game of England, in particular the bench options of England, how, and how England's bench looked like it had on paper a lot more power coming off it. And it's two games now where Scotland, I think, have answered those questions. And I was someone that was posing those questions to Scotland. I still have some questions of when it comes to this Scotland side facing Ireland or South Africa or the All Blacks facing the very, very, very best teams, whether they quite have the, the physicality, the squad, the pack, the front five to be able to do that. But Credit where credit is due, it is two games where actually they've answered those questions because they met France physically, they weren't dominated in that regard, and I don't think England's bench had the impact in terms of power that many people were expecting it might do. So that's another thing from a Scotland perspective where they have answered some of those questions. There's ticks in those boxes, and again, I know you look back at that ridiculous decision at the end of the France game and Scotland could be three from three and we're looking at it and we're thinking, blimey, that game on the final weekend against Ireland could be a Grand Slam decider. They could still make a statement this championship, Scotland. And when you've got the likes of Duan van der Merwe and your ability to capitalise on turnovers, which England coughed up on a regular basis at the weekend. Yeah, there's plenty of good signs, I think, still for Scotland. Um, and for me in particular, that physicality element was, was probably something upon reflection. That actually, do you know what? They've answered that. They've answered those questions over the last few games. So yeah, that's where I am with it. Let me know. I'd imagine there's going to be a lot of England fans, a lot of, re a lot of reaction of England fans I've seen as, as very negative of a lot of ex-players and pundits and things like that as negative, but still a bit more understanding. And I'm probably in the more understanding camp at the moment. Give them time. But... We do need to see more. It's a weird one. Weird time to be an England fan. They've been told to be patient for an awful long time. I do not blame them whatsoever for wanting results in the here and now. But anyway, I'll leave it there. Let me know your views in the comments section. Like the video, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you in the next one.